Hello, my name is Colin Riddington, and this is the latest in my series of videos called Isle of Dogs on Access. Today's video is working with time zones. Now, this was done in response to a thread at accessforums.net called How to Return the Current Time for Specific Time Zone. I decided in order to make it more usable for a range of people that I would actually broaden the scope somewhat. This is the form I've actually used in the example app which will be available with this video. First of all then, it displays the current date and time in the selected time zones of your choice. Those are automatically updated each second based on the time in your whatever zone you set to be the default. And where relevant, daylight savings are applied to the different times. That means as the year progresses, there will be variations in the figures given in the last column, variations between that and the default time. Let's look at the app. And as you can see then, same form as I showed you in the previous picture there, but I've actually updated it to today's date. And at the moment then, I've got this set to Greenwich Mean Time as my default zone because I'm UK based. I've got daylight savings showing only for New Zealand, which is obviously in the summer, the southern hemisphere, and it is actually therefore summertime there. The other areas of the here shown either do not use any daylight savings times or haven't got that active at the moment. I can easily change from any one zone to any other to be my default by double clicking on a time zone. As you can see, central time is now set as that, and it's actually therefore changing everything with comparison to that one there. Eastern Standard Time. You'll notice an interesting one that I've deliberately included Iran, and that is a time zone which is actually not a whole number of hours, but eight and a half hours difference between that and Eastern Standard Time. Let's go back to Greenwich Mean Time here. So as you can see, the time is updating every second there. Now, if I change the date and time in Windows Settings from the automatic one here, let's change that now to October. Fourth, and I can change the time as well if I want to. And if I now just minimize that again and come back into here, it's automatically updated and applied those. And as you can see now, back on the 4th of October, there were the US and the UK were also in summertime. So New Zealand had already started its one as well there. And if we change the date again, obviously we can change that still further. So where does that information come from? We have a table with the time zones that it's got the country that is relevant because for some of these they may share a time zone but actually apply their summer time at different t stages of the year name of the time zone the code for it the full name of it how that compares with the universal coordinated time actually abbreviation is utc rather than uct whether or not that is set as my default zone at the moment the G uk is set as the default zone as you can see there and where daylight savings time is actually enforced in that country there when it starts and when it ends and you can see that for the us it starts in 14th of march in the, this year 2021 and ended on the 7th of november for the uk it started slightly later and it ended slightly earlier Every country is different, and from one year to the next, it may be different as well. New Zealand, being in the Southern Hemisphere, it started its daylight savings time at the end of September, and it ends it next April. Ethiopia and Egypt don't use daylight savings time at all. As I said, Iran, which has a different time zone, three and a half hours normally between that and UTC, and that starts its daylight savings time around about the third week in March and ends it earlier in September than most of. But that's where the, the, all the information is actually stored in the table. Let's just minimise the form a second. And this one here shows you the query. That you, so we've got the same ID here. Default zone. Default zone is actually marked with a P. I'll explain why that is in a second. Time zones, description, country, and UTC are the same as before, as is the start and end times there. So this then will actually calculate the local date time. And as I said, that is updated every second in the form with the timer event. The difference and whether or not daylight savings is, is actually applied. Now that P there, as I said, is shown on the form with a tick. And the way I've done that is if I go into design view, those two fields there are actually in the Wingdings 2 font and the letter P corresponds to a tick symbol as you can see. Well it isn't relevant to that, it's just left blank. So we've got this. 
Oh, no, while I'm at it then, let's just go to the form design of set further, and we have a timer event for the form, a timer interval of 1000 milliseconds, or once every second. And doing that means that the time is actually updated each second. And where it passes midnight, the date will automatically change as well. So as you can see there, time differences there actually are as shown at the moment. We can close the, the query and the table now. And if I just go back to the automatic date and time, it will automatically update. And as you can see there, New Zealand is a day ahead of us uh, because it's 13 hours at this time of year ahead. Iran is three and a half hours ahead at this time of year and so on for the other ones there. So if we just change these here, double click on that. So Iran is now the default time then we've got the time differences as all half an hour values but for around that nine and a half hours minus for central time and so on. So in order to actually find any additional values you would need to look up what the local time is what time for a particular country, what time zone it's in, you would need to actually determine its UTC value and its date start and date end of any daylight savings if that applies. Uh, the code for this, there are four functions. First of all, this function here is daylight savings time default zone, yes or no, boolean. So the default zone, currently Greenwich Mean Time, we check whether it's actually on daylight savings time. So we look up whether the current date is between the start date for daylight savings and the end date. If both of those are true, then it's currently active, and so therefore this, this function there, this daylight savings default zone, is set to true. Otherwise, it either means it's not active at the moment, so it's winter time, or as in the case of countries like Egypt, it's not used at all. So it's false in either case there, if that's the default zone. For the other zones, we base it on ID field of that record there. And it's exactly the same idea. So we see whether or not it's currently on daylight savings time, whether it's between the start and the end times. And if so, that comes true. And if it's not active or it's not used, it's false get the local t zone UTC value so we can actually look up using a, a variable here what the UTC v value is in the table there for that particular zone for, for the default zone where it's true and then from that we can then apply the daylight savings value for the default zone if it's if it daylight savings is applied for the default zone that value is true which is minus one so by subtracting that from the UTC value, we had an hour. or would change according to the time of year. Similarly, for other zones then, we use the ID field at there, and we do exactly the same thing. Then we look up what the UTC value is in the table, and then we compare that by subtracting the time for the selected zone, and we further subtract the get local time UTC. And from that, we can then get the two values that we need. Now if we come away from the code there, all that code is used in the query. The query I showed you earlier, the SQL view here is quite hard to see that at this zoom, so I'm going to actually go back to PowerPoint and show you it in there. Then those two functions that I used earlier. First we find out whether the default zone is in daylight savings time true if so, otherwise false. Secondly, we find out whether all the other zones are actually in daylight savings time. True if, if so, otherwise false. We then use those two functions as part of these fields here. We select the ID. We select whether the default zone is true for the table. If it is, we show the letter P. Remember, using wingdings too, we can then show that as a tick if so, otherwise it's blank. Show various other fields from the table. We then add to the local date time for each zone its value by adjusting it according to this function here then gives you a value here get time zone adjustment so we actually get the lookup value there for the UTC value for that zone we take into account daylight savings time and we take into account whatever zone is set as the local one where you're measuring the time against so having put that in there, we'd normally do this in terms of hours, but it's slightly more complicated by the fact we've got Iran and some other places which have got different time zones which are part hours. So instead we're in minutes, and we multiply this 
function here then, whatever value that is, by 60 to get the difference between the local date time for your default zone and the one for the, each of the other zones. And then we can then do a simple thing here to actually put that value into here for that last column showing you the number of hours difference. And all I've done then, I've ordered it by the default zone, so whichever zone I've, is my default, I shove that at the top, and then after that everything else is in alphabetical order. I think that has explained everything there is to this. So thank you very much for watching. If you found it useful, I'd be very grateful if you do the following. Add a like on the video on YouTube and leave a comment. Suggest any topics for future videos in this series. And please do subscribe. You'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. The notes that accompany this video will include a link for you to download the example application if you wish to do so. Thanks for watching.